Hey everyone, today we are talking about the four steps to a successful career change. Whether you are at a career crossroads and you want to explore your options, whether you are done with the corporate climb and you really want to do something different, or even if you just want to go after the next level in your career, whatever that looks like for you, you're in the right place. The beautiful thing about this is the same steps apply regardless of the magnitude or type of the career change that you want to make. So let's dive right in. The first step is understanding your own barriers that you're putting in place and where you're holding yourself back. Most career changers or aspiring career changers recognize that the biggest barrier to getting the career in life they want is themselves, right? The assumptions that we make about what's possible for us, right? Thinking that a career change means that we have to start over. Thinking that we need to make a pay cut. What are your friends and future employers going to think about previous career decisions you've made and, you know, the path that you've taken to get here. Being afraid of failure, being afraid of success, right? And all the baggage and ideas and assumptions that come along with those. All of these things, unless we acknowledge these limiting beliefs and understand how they are limiting us, out of the gate, we are going to see fewer worse options, right? If you feel like you have to take a pay cut, of course you are only going to see options that feed into that narrative, right? If you believe your career options don't exist, you're not going to see them or worse, you're not even gonna take action to see if they're out there. So the second step, really, really important, get crystal clarity on what it is that you truly want. Right, And this is where you start to even maybe hear the interplay uh, between the mindset step and the clarity piece. If you think that you have to do certain things or accept certain things that you don't want to do, obviously that's going to start to veer your career clarity into a different direction. Here's where I'm going to give advice that's a lot different than most career changers and a lot of coaches, to be honest. Do not start with job postings, do not start with job titles, do not start with the obvious blatant pigeonholes <laughs> that are gonna leave you feeling stuck and like you don't have options. You know, there are a lot of opportunities that don't have a clear title or a label. And when we start with the label or fixate on the label, we miss out on those perhaps much more aligned opportunities that are available to us. Or maybe there is a really clear label and we just don't know what it is yet. I advocate for a bottom up approach, like really starting from what am I good at? What am I good at that I like to do? Especially as we go throughout our careers, we end up gathering a lot of skills. You know, we could be really good at working under pressure. Do we like working under pressure? <laughs> I don't like to. <laughs> got really good at it, not something I wanted to take forward, right? So not just what we're good at, but actually what we want to do and what we want to keep and what things actually we want to drop, right? I never want to see that work again. <laughs> yes, I can do it, but it drives me crazy. Really getting clear on strengths, values, right? Again, beyond, let's take the example of like being a project manager. There are so many different industries and ways of being a project manager. Right? You wanna get crystal clear on how you're a project manager. You wanna get crystal clear on the best cultures, the best team around you that allows you to be at your best. And that's another place that I start with, the people that I work with is really starting with the person. Who are you at your best? And then we can find all these external things that support that. Then stripping away all of the shoulds, all of the assumptions, all the things that we assume that we need to settle for because that's where we really get ourselves in trouble and start watering down our vision before we've even gotten started. Number three, my favorite, that is where we define our roadmap so we can actually understand, okay, what are the incremental steps, the baby steps, the giant leaps that we take to reach these goals, right? Now we have the clarity, now we're feeling confident and emboldened to go after it. How? <laughs> How do we do this big, bold thing? How do we actually execute? I'm not gonna go through all the components that I think should be in a roadmap. I will link to my uh, free four-step guide, which goes through all of them and a lot of what I'm talking about in more detail. The four different components I consider are, uh, of course, your mindset, goals, habits, and what I call your success team, right? And for most people, this would be equivalent to networking. So most people, when they hear the word networking, they really approach it so transactionally. Let me figure out what I wanna do and then I'll go out 
and talk to people or let me submit my resume and then I'll find the hiring manager and try to jump the line. Let me go to this networking event and just, you know, see what happens. <laughs> let me roll the dice and see if something hits. You are missing out on so many possibilities, right? It's very transactional, it's very new, it's not really that strategic. And so I really advocate a much more authentic, natural, long-term strategic focus of truly building relationships. So, so what does that mean? Let me give you some examples so you don't think I'm just like throwing pretty words at you. When people take this type of approach, what starts to happen is, for example, okay, so I have one client, she, um, through a relationship, um, an old boss directed her to another person for a potential career opportunity. She went to that meeting. It wasn't something she thought she wanted to do, but she, she took the, the meeting. And in that discussion, she was very open and honest about whether, you know, she thought it wasn't, you know, probably the right fit for her. The person she was talking to said, oh my gosh, I have this top secret other thing going on. I think you'd be perfect for it. Let's stay in touch. I think we can get it going in six weeks. How cool is that? When we take off, when we just start talking to people, when we were honest with them about what we want and what we don't want, when we sit in that meeting and we say, oh, actually, I don't know if this is the right fit. What I'm really passionate about this is this other thing, right? That enables the other person to reveal, oh my gosh, I actually have this other thing, right? And it doesn't always happen that way, but this is the sort of thing we set the stage for. Another example, imagine opportunities just coming to you when you're not even looking. I call this passive income for your career. I have another former client. She's now on her second startup. She's a networking machine. And we caught up a few weeks ago and she said, oh my gosh, Caroline, I forgot to tell you, I keep getting all these job offers from different places. Now she owns her own company, <laughs> right? She's not looking for jobs, but she is out there. And so she's top of mind as these positions come up, right? And that too, can happen for you. The last example I wanna share with you, a big, big stumbling block with networking is, Caroline, I can't network yet. I can't talk to people because I don't know what I want. Well, here's the thing. These conversations, building relationships with people, this is how you start to fill in the blanks. So rather than suffering in silence, you're able to, to call in these people. Imagine picking up the phone and being able to tap in to people that you know are invested in your success and know you and invite them in to problem solve with you. It's just, it's, it's amazing. And I think it's so often overlooked. Now, before I go into step number four, I should say I'm laying these out very linear, linearly, <laughs> linearly. They are to a certain extent building blocks and it is an iterative process, right? So it's mindset, clarity, take a step, refine the clarity, figure out, pivot, take some steps again. So step number four is getting into action. Don't interpret that as meaning that it takes a long time to take action. I get my own clients into action from day one. Action is how you build confidence. It's not sitting on your couch and waiting to get clarity or waiting to feel confident and then you take action. It's actually <laughs> taking action when you're not quite ready and you have a bunch of blanks to fill in, but you have a little something. And it's so, so important to get into regular steady action soon because, and I love this phrase, I just heard this recently. When you take action, you get either the result that you want or the lesson you needed to hear. Isn't that cool? So either way, even if it's not an outcome that we anticipated or planned for, it's all goodness. I'm going to link all of this great stuff that I talked about below. That free roadmap I mentioned gives a bunch of examples of people that got into action before they had the full picture and it lays out how they were able to get some really cool results um, by just by taking action before they were fully ready. So I hope you enjoy this and I'll talk to you soon.